Hello everyone, I'm Mike and today we will be unboxing, reviewing and showing you how to install and use the Digo Smart Home Alarm System. We also got ourselves the external siren and the doorbell accessories. Just a quick note, uh, while this alarm uh, system was really cheap, the quality of the product is a way above average. Uh, more on that later, we will start by opening the box and inside there's a manual which surprisingly is not made of the cheapest paper and seems to be quite detailed. Then we have the alarm, but let's first look at the accessories that you get in this pack. There are two remote controls, two sensors for either the window or the door, a passive infrared sensor with a wall mount, and a USB micro B cable. Let's now open the wireless alarm host, which is a really nice looking panel and something that will get definitely dirty every time you want to input the pin and again that's the price to pay for beauty. On the back, besides the label with some basic information about the model, you have a wall mount. This alarm has a simple tamper protection, so removing it from the wall while armed will trigger the siren. After removing the protective film, we get an even better looking panel. This device is plug and play, so pretty much just plug in the USB cable and you're set to go. Most of the accessories come pre-programmed from factory to work directly with the alarm. First, you have to input the password to get to the menu. Please input password. The default password is 1234 and 6666. Then you press the down button, as pressing the return button will relock the system. Now you can see the main menu and we are going to settings. On the delay submenu you can set the delay for exit, entry and the siren duration. On the switch submenu you can enable and disable the arm beep, siren, the arm SMS, the keypad lock, backlight and keypad tow. On the password submenu you can set a password for the system and another one for the user. On the language submenu this alarm is available in three different languages, Chinese, English or German. We will show you anyway how to add and remove accessories, go back to the main menu and to the parts submenu. Here we can add and remove our accessories or parts. We can add remotes, detectors and RFID cards. Let's start with the remote controls. And then the window or door sensors. You pretty much just have to go to the menu, select the type of the part, select what should happen if it triggers and give it a number. So let's now set up the doorbell really quick. We also tried to add a RFID card, but unfortunately it didn't seem to accept it. Maybe the ones we've tried are not supported, I even made sure the tag is correctly written and it seems to be working with my old system. We couldn't find any information on the manual or websites about the supported RFID tags. Let's now jump to some of the other features of this device. On the logs submenu you can check the alarm logs and the arm logs, so if for some reason it went off when you were away you can always check it there. On the record the menu option, you can record a 20 seconds voice message. If the alarm goes off, the alarm will dial the preset phone number and play the recorded message. This requires you to have a um, SIM card inside the device. Jumping to the phone menu, after you add a SIM card to your device, you can set it up, send you an SMS or call you when something happens. It will send you messages like if the alarm goes off, the power went down, the battery is low, the power is back on, and so on. You can also send an SMS to the device, which allows you to turn the alarm on or off, or even change some settings. Right now we have no network because there is no SIM card. To add a SIM card to your device, just grab it and plug it in in the right position. It is a good idea to remove the pin before inserting it. And now we are connected to the GSM network. As soon as you trigger any of the sensors, you have by default 15 seconds to disable the alarm. You can change that time on the delay submenu. 
We tried several times to set up the Wi-Fi and the app that the um, device comes with, but unfortunately we were unable to do so. It tries to connect using something called AirLink, which is quite deprecated and provides no other decent way of connecting via Wi-Fi. Hopefully this will change in the future with a few more updates. A really nice feature from this product is the keyboard backlight. So if you're getting home and the light switch is on the other side of the room, you can still see what you're typing. As with any panel like this, it will be perfectly normal to have fingerprints all over. This means that if you have a pin like 1111 or 2222, uh, it would actually be easy to reverse your combination by looking at the fingerprints. Just remember you can always use the remote in your keychain or set up an RFID card. Finally, let's get to the part where you get to hear how the alarm sounds. First, without the external siren. And now with the external siren. System disarmed. There's a lot of eye candy in this product and for the looks of it, it seems to be secure enough for any home or uh, even a small business. For now, judging for all the features, ease of use, installation and price, it's a 8 out of 10. The two points missing is due to the fact that the device is using an old GSM module, so it's not very future proof, and that for now the Wi-Fi can only be used with the deprecated Airlink. That was it for today, thanks for watching, feel free to like, and if you would like to get more random tech videos, feel free to subscribe. Thank you and see you next time.